Good morning. Good morning, Fellowship Church. We're super excited to have you here this morning. Um, if you would, please stand and join us in some worship. Sing let praise. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. And let it arise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it arise, let praise arise. Come on, sing it out. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. And fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high with all creation cry. God, we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise the faith be a song that overcomes the raging sea. Let faith be the song that calms the storm inside of me. And let it arise. Let faith The giants fall, and fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise come on and this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. And this is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Hey, good morning. Uh, hey, before you have a seat, would you run around? Literally, I don't care if you run, you can jump, you can holler, anything else. Go around, find four or five people, give them a high five, a hug, and welcome them this morning.
As you were making your way back to your seat, we'd love for you to just take a seat for a moment. We're going to go over a couple of announcements and continue with our worship this morning. Number one, it's just really good to see you. In case we've never met, my name is Kevin. I'm the missions, missions and small groups pastor here, and um, I'm glad that uh, you have joined us this morning in person or online, either one. Uh, it's going to be a really, really good morning for sure. Uh, I know there's bound to be some of you that are new. This is your first Sunday here. Would you do us a favor and would you get your phone out, zoom in on the QR code that's here on the screen behind me and, uh, and, and select that and it's going to take you to what we call Hub Central. Uh, from here, you're going to see a tab that says I'm new. If you would select that, fill out that information, we'd love to connect with you this week. Just say hi, maybe answer some questions or anything else that we can do for you. We'd love to get to know you better. Uh, and we know that, uh, well, this is one of the easiest ways for us to do that. So if you would make sure and fill that out, we would really, really appreciate that. Also, if you are a regular member and for whatever reason you don't get our digital bulletin that comes out weekly, this is the place you can get that as well and find out all kinds of other information about the church. This is the place. So. Uh, be sure and have that in your phone and have it available so you can get signed up for things and, and be a part of all the stuff that's going on. A couple of quick announcements. Number one, uh, we have an event coming up Friday night called Secret Church. It's in your bulletin there. We'd love for you to come and be a part of this. Uh, it is a 6 p.m. to midnight just incredible Bible study that you can walk through uh, with us uh, with a guy named David Platt. Uh, it's all online. We watch it on TV. We've done this for years and years. We'd love for you to be a part of this with us. I know you're thinking, man, six hours is an eternity uh, to sit through this thing. But uh, it is the best Bible study material I've ever had. This is the, the book of Ruth. This is what we're going to go through this time. Uh, it is life-altering. It's extremely, I, I can't stress this enough, it's extremely good. We'd love for you to come and check it out and be a part of that. Uh, you can find that in the bulletin, sign up. It's 15 bucks. You get a book, you get a journal, um, and you bring some snacks, and you get some breaks throughout, and we have a great time as we walk through this whole thing for sure. Uh, there's also midweek. Don't forget about those. We have men's group, a marriage class, women's group. You still can come and be a part of our midweek uh, stuff that we have going on and uh, all kinds of things. There's camps right around the corner. I can't believe that summer is, what, six weeks away? Not even six weeks away yet. Uh, I don't know why you're Yoohoo and all you people that love 110 degree weather. God bless you. Um, <clears throat> so for real, I've lived here my whole life and still not over 110 degrees. But uh, anyway, summer's right around the corner. We've got camps coming up, and so we want you to know about those things. There's ways that you can sign up and be a part. Uh, so don't miss out. All of that stuff is in the bulletin. Before we go back to our worship, uh, I'm going to pray. Before we pray, one of the things that I think it's important that we need to kind of be conscious of, or maybe we're just going to take a minute and kind of pray this morning, is as you know, over the weekend, I'm sure you saw the news, over the weekend, uh, I think it was Iran launched an attack on Israel. Now, you may be saying, why are we bringing this up? Because it's so far away from us. Well, long story short, Genesis chapter 12 is a great place to start. When God starts talking to Abraham and saying, hey, I'm going to make you a great nation. Uh, you're, he's going to be, you're going to have so many descendants. Remember, he didn't have any kids or anything, but you're going to have so many descendants. And he goes on and on and explains all these great things to Abram and says, this is what we're going to do. Change his name to Abraham later, all that kind of stuff. But here's what he told him. He said, I'm going to bless you. And then he goes on to say what's really important, I think, for us, and we need to remember. He says, I'm going to bless you, and not only am I going to bless you, but I'm going to bless those. I'm going to bless those others. Like outside of you, I'm going to bless those who bless you. So I think that that carries on to this day. And so we need to remember, our brothers and sisters, there are those who believe in Jesus that are Messianic Jews that are in Israel. We need to pray for them. And uh, so we're going to do that today. Um, I, I don't know exactly how or what, but whatever God puts on your heart, I'm just going to pause for about 30 seconds, let you pray, uh, and then I'll pray and we'll continue on with our worship this morning. So let's just pause, pray whatever it is that God leads you to pray. God, I can't imagine what it would look like, sound like, feel like to wake up to things flying over our heads and blowing up and explosions and 
all of that. I, I can't imagine the emotions and the confusion and uh, uh, just the uncertainty of what the next moment or tomorrow is going to bring. And so uh, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Israel. We ask for, as you say in the Bible, we ask for your blessing over them. We ask for your protection over them. We ask for your wisdom and guidance through them. We know that uh, this is where Jesus is coming back. Uh, and we look forward to the day that Jesus comes back. And so uh, we look to the heavens not to see the things that are flying overhead, but we look to the heavens to you uh, and just say, would you help? Um, would, you, would you be the peace that they need? Would you be the protection that they need more than what physical protection can bring? Um, you bring so much more. So bless them today. Help us to remember uh, what's going on. Help us to remember to pray. Help us to remember that this is so far beyond politics and countries and all that. We don't, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but we fight against the principalities uh, of the evil, of, of evil and, and demonic in the world. And so uh, help us to remember that. Help us to remember that... Um, that's what we're after, especially as we voice our concerns with our friends and on Facebook and things like that. Uh, may we be people of peace. May we be people as Christians, as followers of you, these, these people who bless and don't curse. So we bless today. And I thank you. Um, it's by the grace of Jesus that we're able to do that. Uh, it's by his love for us that we're able to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. And so uh, that's what we do today. And we ask you, come Lord Jesus, soon. Gosh, it would be so great to see you come soon, to hear the trumpet sound and be called up into the heaven with you. So thank you for that day that's coming. We have work to do between here and there. Help us to remember that in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together and worship our faithful God who never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever.
sing, You Freed the Captives. You freed the captives, and you're freeing hearts right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You touch the lepers, and I feel your touch right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. I'm calling on the Holy Spirit. Almighty river, come and fill me again. Come and fill me again. Come and fill me
Now that I'm yours and you are mine Our love is the secret that I find I'll spend forever in the pleasure I've found Looking in your eyes Give me
this world you can have all this world give me Jesus Lord all we need is you we don't need anyone or anything else Lord we proclaim that this morning we love you we praise you Jesus we pray amen Good morning, how's everybody doing? Give me one second real quick. Kids, while you got time, you can go down to Kids Place. Uh, and parents, make sure you pick them up at the end, okay? Last week we had like five kids. Uh, parents, we had to call them, they were on a date or something. There we go. I had to repeat, I had to tell them something secret. You want to know what I told them? I said, play that last song at the end. I could have just said that out loud to everybody. I thought it was a good thing. I think it goes along with our message. Um, man, what a beautiful day. It's been a beautiful weekend. Did anybody hang out outside yesterday? Some of y'all? Okay. How many people just didn't do anything yesterday? How many people worked too hard? Okay. This section over here, I don't believe. Okay. Anyhow. Well, my name is Jeff. I'm one of the pastors here, uh, and uh, Chad is out of town, and so when he's out of town, we get to volunteer and are being voluntold when we get to preach, and so it's my honor, and uh, we're going through a series as a church that we've been going through this year, and uh, took a little break for a while, and then come back to it, um, but it's called The Goat, the greatest of all time, and we've been studying what? Sermon on the Mount, okay, okay. I'm gonna report back to Chad that retention rate is not great. No, I'm just kidding. We've been looking at this Sermon on the Mount and we've been looking at this and Jesus is walking through chapter five of Matthew all the way up to now we're in chapter seven. And if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open up to chapter seven, verses 13 and 14. But everything that Jesus has been teaching us this time is really about the Christian life. And it's, a, it's about his standards and his ways and, and how he wants us to live. And, and some of it's contrary to what we may have thought. A lot of it's contrary to how we feel. It's not natural for us to do these things. And so he's preaching and teaching this mass group of people. He's preaching and teaching to them. And today we enter into a new time of this sermon. It's the conclusion. It's wrapping up. In every message that we preach here at Fellowship Church, we want to give you practical stuff and, and, and inspiring stuff, but the end goal is that when you walk out of this room, you've made a choice to live how God wants you to live, to do what God wants you to do, and to go out into the world and put it to what? Practice. And so this is, a, this is the spot in the sermon on the mount that we're entering. Jesus is wrapping it up. And he's given us now the application, okay, the challenge. What are we going to do with the information that he's given us? So often we live in a day of information. We know too much information. Okay, the older I get, the more I understand the term, ignorance is bliss. If you just didn't know about it, then you wouldn't have to worry about it, right? A lot of that stuff. Ignorance is bliss. But we now have all this information that Jesus has given us and he's taught us. And now it's about what are we going to do with it? I would say that this is more of like a fork in the road. Which direction are you going to take? And so everybody here today at some point has either made that decision and they've chose one path to the left or to the right, or you are standing at that crossroad today. Our desire is at the conclusion of the service that we're 
encouraged and challenged to be where God's called us to be, to live how God's called us to live. And if we haven't made that decision that today, before we leave, that each one of you would make sure that you've made that decision. So here it is. Let's read it and let's study it and let's learn what God has for us. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 through 14, it says this, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. Those who find it are few. So this scripture is setting up a couple of things. How many gates are there? Two. How many ways or roads are there? Two. How many crowds are there? Two. How many destinations are there? Two. Two gates, two roads, two crowds, two destinations. Our life it leads up to this. We're either going towards God or we're going away from him. And so Jesus has challenged us after hearing all this. He's communicating to these people and he's saying, choose the narrow gate. Now, a lot of people misunderstand the crowd here. They think a lot of it is, you know, good people versus evil people. Uh, religious people versus non-religious people. But the reality is, is that Jesus is speaking to a group of people and he's telling them there's the, there, there's the narrow gate, there's the wide gate, there's the easy way and the hard way. There's life and there's destruction. Choose which way you're going to go. And we think that this is like, okay, well, good people are always going to choose the right way, okay? Evil people, Hitler, Ted Bundy, Charles Manson, all those people are going to, they're the bad people. So this is really, at the end of the day, good people are going to go down the right way and bad people and people who are atheists and stuff, they're, they're going down the wide way, uh, but all good people are going to go down the narrow path. The reality is that Jesus was really talking to a group of very religious people. They believed in God. They, they were following Jewish laws and customs. And he's given this message to a group, group of religious people like today. We're in here, and, and this message is really for each one of us. No matter how long we've been going to church or how much Bible knowledge we have or, or, or any of our history that comes with that, we need to listen and to take hold of what Jesus is really saying here. And he says some very difficult things in this passage that are contrary to a lot of things we may have grown up believing or feeling or understanding. And he says some things that, that will challenge the life that we live. This, this is not a new concept. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, Moses says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I've set before you, what? Life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. In Jeremiah 21, 8, it says this, and to this people you shall say, thus saith the Lord, behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. So Jesus is talking to this group of people and he's saying there's two gates, there's two roads, there's two crowds, there's two destinations. And they know this concept, that there's life and there's death. There's life and there's destruction. Those 
are the only two options, the only two results of the life we live. And so he challenges them. He challenges them to enter into their narrow gate. So let's talk about the two gates. There are two gates, the narrow and the wide. Okay? The narrow and the wide. Here's what I want you to understand. The Christian life must be entered into intentionally. What does that mean? This means this. It, it can't be entered into accidentally. Nobody's walking around life and accidentally finds the narrow gate. You don't accidentally become a follower of Christ. It has to be intentional. It, it, it can't be because of who your parents are. It can't be because of what church you go to. It can't be because it's what your spouse wants you to do. You can't be guilted into it or pressured into it by others. It has to be your choice because you see the depravity of your sin in your life and the desperation of the position you find yourself in in comparison to God's standards. The Christian life must be entered into intentionally. You have to make a choice, you and you alone. I was studying this and listening to some sermons. We had to drive all the way to Tyler for some baseball games. And so when I, when I was by myself. And when I'm by myself, even when I have other people with me, I like to listen to talk radio or sermons or podcasts like that. And so I listen to a lot of sermons about this section and listen and see what other people say. And one of the things that Vody Bauckham says, Vody was said, you know, when, when I, I stopped asking people, are you a Christian? He, he said, because people would say, yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I grew up in church. He said, well, you better stay out of the garage. Because if you go in the garage too much, you might become a car. Are you a Christian? Yeah, my, my family's Christian. We all, I grew up Christian. He even said this one. He said, people say, are you a Christian? I've been a Christian my whole life. He said, you know, it's impossible. You know why it's impossible? Because we're all born sinners. We're all born separate from God. Because of the original sin of Adam and Eve, we've been set down a path that's not in the direction that God wants us to go. We're all born with a with a sinful heart, we've, we've all gone astray, we've all pulled away from where God wants us to be. In Isaiah 53, 6, it says this, all we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to which way? His own way. We've all done life the way we wanted to do it. We've all made choices that we knew weren't right and we knew that God didn't want and we ignored it and we did what we wanted to do. That's sin. We've all, at some point in our life, have sin. And we start off that way with a natural tendency to do what we want to do from a very early age, right? And some of us still struggle with it all the time. Okay? Now listen. There are two gates, the narrow and the wide. And we have to enter into the narrow gate intentionally. Go to Matthew, I mean Mark chapter 1, verse 14 through 15. I got a little ahead of myself and skipped that one, but it says this. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying this, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. And this is the key part. Repent and believe in the gospel. 
The Christian life is entered in by this, repenting and believing in the gospel. What does it mean to repent? To repent means to turn away from sin. To turn away from life that says, I want to do what I want, and I want what I want, and I want it when I want. And I'm not listening to anybody else. Repenting is this, giving up control of your life. I'm turning away from my old self. I'm turning towards Christ. There's got to be, if I repent, there has to be what? Change. I've got, to, I've got to surrender to God the gospel that I'm sinful, that I have abandoned God, I have rejected him, I have wronged him, and I deserve punishment for that. No matter how little it has been, all it takes is one thing, that I've wronged him, I've, I've fallen short of his standard, I repent of that, and I turn towards Jesus. And I make him the master of my life, the Lord of my life. And now it becomes his way and his way only. And so the Christian life has to be done intentionally. It has to be chosen intentionally. And some of you here today are at that point where you haven't intentionally chosen to follow Jesus. Some of you have. Okay? But if you haven't, that's your challenge today. What are you waiting on? Choose today. We're all born on the wide and easy road. Okay, here's, we're all born, okay, on that wide and easy road. We have to seek out. Some of my favorite scriptures in all the Bible is Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. God says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope in a future. Those are great, okay? A lot of people, a lot of people cling to that because it sounds like, oh, there's, God doesn't want anything bad for me. It's going to be great. He has plans to prosper me, and if I just follow him, it's going to be like, I, I, I'm going to trust that guy. That sounds great. But we miss out on the next part. It says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your what? Heart. It takes us being intentional. It takes us seeking God with everything we have. That leads us to the next part. Jesus says, enter by the narrow gate. And I want you to understand this. The next part is this. There are two roads. What two roads are there? The easy and the hard. How many love, like, the easy road? Be honest. Just in general, not like spiritually, okay? Like the easy road. One of my dream jobs would be to be a consultant that uses, like, sidewalks. Like, they have designs and plans and it's like, which path is the best path to put this sidewalk so you're not walking out of the way? You know what I mean? Like the shortest distance between two points is what? Straight line. Okay? So I'd like, you know, hey, listen, as a, as a, a lineman by birth, okay, we, we like to expend as little energy as possible doing the job required. Okay? And it's, but it's like... Man, listen, why, why'd you go there and then here? Like, let's just, you know, a gra- gradual grades, not steep grades, you know what I mean? All those things. We like the easy. It's, it's easier, right? But we're all born on this wide, easy path. But there's two options here that Jesus gives us. The easy way and the hard way. And we always say, hey, what? The Christian life is the easy way. Am I wrong? A lot of times we tell people, listen, if you will follow Jesus, your life will be better and things will be smoother and you're going to avoid a lot of things. That's true. But that doesn't mean it's going to be easier. Matter of fact, that's not what Jesus says. 
And the thing is this, the Christian life is not easy. It's not easy to do what God has called us to do. We start this sermon uh, with, um, in Matthew chapter 5, right? And we started with the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit. That's not easy. Blessed are the meek. It's not easy to be meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. This is not easy. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted. He goes on down and says what? Here's a new standard, right? Anger. You have heard what it was said of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be held liable. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable for judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to hell of fire. That's hard, right? That's hard to do. It's hard to live to that standard, but it's what we're called to do. Not even talking about lust, you've heard it said it was don't commit adultery, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with, with lustful intent has already committed adultery. The standard that God gives us, the standard that Jesus shows us is a difficult standard to follow. So the Christian life isn't easy. Jesus is calling us to live it. It's often filled with difficult decisions and hard choices. Do we do what everyone else is doing or do we do what God is calling us to do? Do we do what we want to do when we feel like it or do we submit to what Jesus tells us to do? Do we get left out because we choose God's standards or do we compromise and join the crowd? Following Christ is not easy. There's going to be a lot of decisions and choices. There's going to be a lot of things that we miss out on because it goes contrary to what the wide and easy path is. Students, being in high school, in middle school, you're surrounded by a lot of people that go with the crowd. And Jesus is calling you to go with him and follow him. Adults, you're at class, you're at school, class, school, work, right? You're surrounded by people that don't believe this. Um, you have your, your, um, your peers, the, the kids, your kids' friends, parents, the people you hang out with, the baseball teams, the soccer teams, the dance teams, all those things. You're gonna be surrounded by a group of people and most of those people aren't going to believe what you believe or follow what Jesus says and, and you're going to be in some conflict sometime and you're going to have to choose, are, are you and your house going to honor God with, with your time and your commitment and your dedication or are you going to fall into the, the, the path and the crowd and go where they go and get swept up? The Christian life isn't easy. hard. Look what it says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteous sakes, for theirs is the kingdom of God of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile, revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is what? Great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Earlier in this sermon, Jesus is saying, follow me, follow the ways of God, and it's going to put you in conflict with people. It's going to put you in a situation where you're struggling to have to make decisions and be surrounded by people who disagree, to be people who um, are frustrated with you. We have a picture up here of the Narrow road. 
I would hate to have to walk up that. Right? Walking down it looks pretty fun, right? But you go down, you always got to go back up, you know? But see, I think this is a great illustration of what the, the road of following Christ is like. You see in this picture, you see a lot of things. I see a lot of hills. And I see some dry situations. It looks like it's hot. But then you end up down here where by the water. The Christian life isn't always difficult. There are times where it's hard. But there's times where it's refreshing. You got down here, you got the water that goes down. And you can see it, and, it's, and it's, it's like a place of refuge. But you also have, like, the lookout point. Right up here, y'all see the lookout point? You can see back, you can see how far you've come. How many people have ever done that? How many of you can look back and see where you were and where you are now? And you can see how far you've come. Those are great moments. So the Christian life, it's... It's not easy, but it's worth it. And it's not always hard. There are times when it is. There's times where there's refuge, and there's time where there's celebration. So guess what? It's important for us to gather together weekly. Why? To find refuge, right? And to celebrate. To be surrounded by other people who have difficult weeks and are struggling with things and we encourage one another and we build one another up. That's what we come to church for. That's why we need each other. That's why we need to be in connect groups. That's why we need to be going out and serving and ministering together so that we can encourage one another, build one each other, each other up. There's two gates. There's two roads, okay. And this one, there are two crowds. Two crowds. Where are the two crowds? The what? The many and the few. The Christian life is not popular. Okay? Jesus says, For the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. The Christian life isn't popular. There's going to be times where we feel like we're alone. There's going to be times where we're walking and it seems like there's no one around us. And that's okay. That's okay. We have to understand that God is calling us to walk with him, not to follow other people. And there's times where it's, we're going to, that narrow road, that hard road is going to take us away from what everybody else is doing. And we have to be okay with that. Sometimes we like to throw pity parties for ourselves, right? We do. Okay. But part of understanding this is part of the reason I, I think this is a great message is that we need to be aware and remind ourselves sometimes of the fact that not everybody's going to believe what I believe and not everybody's going to live how I live and I don't need to be depressed by that in such a way that, that I hunker down and I don't actively live for Christ. We don't need to be consumed with what everybody else is doing. We need to be consumed with what God's called us to do. Guys, listen, there are times in my life when I look and see, I wish I had what other people had, and I wish I could do the things that other people do. They're not sinful in of themselves, but because of priorities, the life that God's called me to live and for us to live, I have to choose different things. I have to prioritize other things. And, and sometimes it's like frustrating. I get it. But we're living today. 
The call to the Christian life is to live how God wants us to live, to live for Jesus, to follow him. It's not easy, and it's not popular. Look what Matthew chapter 13 says, verse 1 through 9. It says, that same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowds gathered around him so that he got in a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables, saying, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the, along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground, but they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. This describes the life that we live today. Okay? That, that Jesus has spoken to all of us. The gospel has been presented all across this church, right? Most people, not all people, most people have heard about God. Most people have heard the story about Jesus. And what's it say? Some of it falls on the hard path. Some people are resistant to it. They don't care. It goes one in, in one ear and out the other, and it doesn't do anything. The birds come and take it. Some people hear about Jesus and reject him immediately. Okay? Then it says some of it falls on the, 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 the rocky soil. And it says that, that, that it takes root, root real fast because there's, there's not, it can't, the, the roots can't go deep and it gets down there and all of a sudden, okay, I got to go up. And a lot of people hear about Jesus like, oh, that's, that's cool. I like that. And then the sun comes up and what happens? It begins stress. And it has no foundation. It has no roots. That's like the person who hears about Jesus. And I would call this uh, what I call um, fire insurance Christian. Right? It's like taking out a policy. I went to church. They told me about the fact that I'm going to go to hell if I don't believe in Jesus. And um, I don't want to do that. So I'll sign up for that hell fire insurance. Okay? I'm going to keep that in my back pocket until I die. I'm going to live how I want to live, right? I'm going to do what I want to do. And then when I, when I die, I'm going to like, oh, look, I think I got that. Pol oh, yeah, right here. One day, I told everybody that I didn't want to go to hell. So I put it back there. But their life never changed. They thought it was cool. They wanted it. But what happened? As soon as life got difficult, as soon as there were tough choices to be made, they walked away. Okay. I'll come back to this, Right? Later, I'm gonna do what I want to do now. That's like people in the rocky soil. And then it also says, well, there's some that, that that seeds fell among the thorns and grew up and choked them out. It's a very similar situation. Some start down the right path and the right journey and it begins to take root but they're surrounded by people that tell them false stuff that tell them that this is not really true or or you could do this or that and it doesn't have to just be Jesus and all this other stuff and and so it never really blossoms it never really takes hold and then it says this there's like the other one the, the last one is other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. It's the same thing. This is the, the part. 
you have all these options. And the, the, the last one, one of them, is where it takes, takes hold and there's fruit and there's, 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 there's evidence of a life changed. The Christian life is not popular. The Christian life is not easy. And I want you to understand this. We don't need to make it easier than it really is. We don't need to tell people that it's easier than it really is. One of the things I think the church has struggled with is we want, how, how many people want everybody to go to heaven? Raise your hand. Okay. We, we, we don't want people to go to hell. Now listen, some of you may say that on the highway. Okay. And there's people you don't like, but at the end of the day, we really don't want. We want people to trust and live for Jesus. We want that. But sometimes in our desire for everybody to get to heaven, we start making it seem easier to be a Christian than it really is. And some churches, raise your hand if you want to accept Jesus Christ, repeat after me, right? Say it. Write it down in your Bible. On this day, you're saved, but there's nothing that goes along with that. There's no mention or talk of, now there's some hard choices. You're going to have to deny yourself. You're going to have to pick up your cross. Listen, we don't need to make it easier, but we definitely don't need to make it what? Harder. And sometimes as Christians, we make we, 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 we like to think that we make, it, we make it easier, but we're making it harder for people. So anyhow, there's two, there's two gates, there's two roads, there's two crowds, and at the end there's two destinations. The Christian life is only achieved by one way, following Jesus. There are not many ways to heaven, there's only one way. We must choose the narrow gate and the hard road. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 through 27, it says this, If anyone would come after me, let him what? Deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels and the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. There's only one way. It's the hard way. It's the lonely way sometimes. It's the uphill battle. But it's also the times of refuge and celebration. Not always hard, but sometimes it is. There's only one way. So we live in a, a day, and I heard this on the way to church today. It's amazing how God works. But we live in a day and age where there's what? There's, there's basically four beliefs when it comes to, like, how do we get to heaven? The first way is universalism. Universalism. Basically, congratulations, we all get to go to heaven. No matter how you live, what you believe in, everybody gets to heaven. That's not what Jesus says. Okay? The other way is pluralism. That there are many ways that not everybody gets to go to heaven, but there's many routes. There's many roads. How many roads does Jesus say there is to get to heaven? One. Glad nobody said two. Okay? One way. Pluralism says, you know, listen, you believe what you want to believe, boom. You have a little bit of, you're fine. Jesus says there's only one way. The only way to the Father is through him. There's inclusivism, okay? Inclusivism says this, 
this is where a lot of Christian theology gets off. Which is like, yes, Jesus is the only way, but if you have a little bit of Jesus, you're good. Okay? It's more tolerant. It's more, there's more leniency. It's like, yeah, you could do this and that, and as long as it kind of lines up with some of this, we're good. But Jesus, the true Christian follower, Jesus teaches this exclusive, exclusivism. It's exclusive. The only way to Jesus is through the, to God is through the Father. The only way to life is through trusting Jesus, to following Jesus. To entering the gate, but also walking down the narrow path, the hard path. So what do we, how, what do we, what do we come up with today? Here's the first thing I want to say. Some of you right now or in life or, or, or have been struggling with this, you feel like you've been lied to. You felt like someone told you a story. That following Jesus was going to make your life easier and your problems were going to go away. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that happened to you. And I want to challenge you that maybe today because you realize, listen, okay, there are going to be difficult times. I'm not crazy. Okay? You feel like, like everybody told you if, if you just follow Jesus, your life's going to be perfect and, and, and it's going to be great. And you say, I want that. But then you start to experience some difficulties and you thought, I must be doing something wrong. The reality is, is that you're going to go through those things. That's okay. You're going to struggle and have difficult times and decisions. The Christian life is filled with those moments. So I want to apologize that someone maybe tricked you or, or, or tried to tell you it was something otherwise. But don't lose hope. It's worth it to follow Jesus. Some of you may feel like you can have the best of both worlds. Some of us in here today are thinking, I could thread that needle between the wide road and the narrow road, the easy way, the hard way. I can, I can have a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and I can end up at the right destination. I would say that's what most people in our society and our area struggle with. You think I can have a little bit of the world and a little bit of Jesus and I'm good. You can't. You can't walk down the middle. There's two ways. The narrow gate, the wide gate. The easy way, the hard way. You can't weave in and out of them. If you're weaving in and out of them, I'm going to tell you right now, you're on the wrong road. You're being fooled. There's only one way. Some of you today are here and you stand at the fork in the road. Some of you here, you're just investigating. And you're thinking, okay, I hear this, I hear that, which way do I go? I challenge you today to choose the narrow gate. What's the narrow gate? Choosing Jesus. The narrow gate is saying, I choose Jesus. That's why I asked the worship team when they come up here in a second to play that last song, right? Give me Jesus. You can have all the world. I don't care about any of it. I want Jesus. And that's the attitude that God calls us to. We want things. We need things. We have desires. I think, But at the end of the day, all that's worthless. I want Jesus above all things. Then things get easier in this sense. Our priorities align with his. Our desires begin to align with his. As we mature and strengthen our faith, then the decisions become easier. 
But it's a long journey to be who God's called us to be. So some of you are the fork in the road. Today's the day. You choose which way to follow. The last one, the group of this is this. Some of you today are walking the walk. You get it. You got it. Keep on going. Don't stop. Allow God to use you to further his kingdom. So the bottom line today is this. The Christian life may not be the easiest, but it does offer what? The greatest reward. Let's pray. Father God, I, I just want to thank you for your word. God, as we have gone through the, the greatest sermon ever told, we've learned a lot, but God, now it's time to, for application. And I want to pray right now, if there's anyone in this room that's never chosen you over everything and everyone else, that today would be the day that they would come forward here in a minute and tell me or tell one of our pastors that they today recognize their need for salvation, their need for a Savior, and that they choose you above all. Some of us in here today, we, we may feel like we're alone. We, 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 we're, we need encouragement. We need other believers. We need a, we need a church home. We need a, to get connected somewhere and make this our family. Maybe that person needs to come down and say, I, I want to know more about how I can be a part of this church family. So, God, I pray that they would do that. Whatever it is that you're calling us to do to respond to this message, God, I pray that we would be obedient that we would trust you. God, we love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church family, we're going to sing on the way out. I'd love to meet with you, talk with you. If this is your first time, I'd we'll love to meet you down here. You made a decision. You need prayer. Come down. Spend time praying. But as the worship team leads, let's stand. Let's sing together as we conclude our message today. Love you guys. And I don't want anything but you. You're more than every dream come true. All of the things I I'm yours and you are mine. Our love is the secret that I find. I'll spend forever in the pleasure I've found.
Jesus, you 